Suppose you'd like to know how I got the bug for Juneteenth. You'd really need to know a doctor, Ronald Myers. He was a medical doctor, a minister, and a jazz musician all rolled into one. And he was adamant about Juneteenth being a national holiday. Well, I think some of it might have rubbed off on me because I became restless. At 89, I thought there was something I should be doing. And so I decided to walk from Fort Worth to Washington, D.C. I do it two and a half miles at a time to symbolize that the enslaved weren't free for two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation. A General Gordon Granger made his way to Galveston with several thousand black troops. You see, plantation owners had carried their slaves to Texas. There were 250,000 of them there. They planned to come back and get them after the Civil War. But it didn't happen like that. And when the general and the troops let everybody in Galveston know that the enslaved were free, he nailed that general order to the door of what's now Reedy Chapel, African Methodist Episcopal Church. And when those people came in from their work and somebody read that to them, we started celebrating and we've been celebrating ever since. Now that we have Juneteenth as a national holiday, it's on the calendar. People are beginning to learn about it that never even heard of a Juneteenth. And so, our Juneteenth this year has already begun. The fact that now we can use the airlines to fly all over these United States and the world. And so we're able to go to reunions and conferences and gather with others who are like-minded. I'm delighted to see the young people who are piloting the planes, who are attendants, who have other positions with the airline. I'm delighted with the progress they made. I want the young people on this United flight to realize if people can be taught to hate, they can be taught to love.